CGPZ. Hello my friends and welcome to CGPZ. This is a beginner's tutorial so we're going to make it as simple as possible. So we start off by using the default cube and we're going to go into edit mode, select all the faces and press I twice to inset the faces against the individuals. Now come over to the toolbar on the left here and hold extrude down with the left click. That will bring up this other toolbar where you can select extrude against the normals. When you do that, it brings up this little yellow dot above the mesh. Now you can left click on that, move it up and down and extrude it to the amount you want it to. Right, so I've got that to the depth I want it to go to. Now I can select this little square up here, which is gonna select face mode where I can select the faces. Select the first face with left click, then hold shift and left click to select the rest of the faces. Now I wanna leave one face on and delete the rest of the faces I've selected. So press delete and select faces. Okay, so now I wanna separate this face from the rest of the mesh. So if you select the face and press P, click by selection. And if we go into object mode right here, you can see that we can now click on both meshes. Now click the other mesh and we'll go into edit mode. And I wanna make an indent in the corners to make it look like they're separate bits of wood. Right, I'm in face mode, so I've got to click edge select and click on the first edge using alt left mouse button. And every edge after that, you have to hold shift alt left mouse button. Now I'm afraid you'll have to do the same with the rest of the corners, so I'm gonna speed this footage up because this bit is kind of boring. Okay, now all the faces are selected, it's time to bevel the corners. To do that, you can go to the toolbar on the side and click the bevel option, but I'm gonna use a shortcut again, which is Control B, and move the mouse about until you get the exact distance you want. Okay, I believe that's about perfect. Now once again, go over to the side toolbar again and click extrude against the normals and click on the little yellow dot again, extruding it to where you want it. I think that'll do about there. Right, a quick scroll to have a look. We'll go back into object mode and you'll be able to see the lines a little bit more clearly. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, now if we select that face that we left there earlier, we will create the slats of wood that go down the side and over the top of the rest of the crate. So jump back into edit mode, click on the face select again and select the face. I now wanna create some loop cuts can use the option on the toolbar, but I'm gonna use shortcuts again. So control R, and then scroll the mouse wheel upwards until you get the amount of cuts you want. Now these are gonna act as like slats of wood going up the crate. So when you're happy with the amount of slats of wood you've got, you left click to confirm the amount of loop cuts. And once you left click, you can then move the loop cuts left and right uh, to, you know, if you don't want them central, but if you do want them central, you just have to press uh, the right mouse button. Now control B to make a bit of a gap in each piece of wood. Once you're happy with that, go back up to face select mode and select all the larger faces on the mesh, but make sure you hold shift after you select the first face. Once they're all selected, I want to extrude them. Again, you can use the toolbar, but I'm gonna use the shortcut E to extrude and move your mouse until you've got it to the depth you want it. Right, I wanna create a bit of a bevel at the edge of every piece of wood, just to make it look a little bit more curved. So I'm gonna select every single edge and once they're all selected, I'm going to bevel them using the shortcut Control B again. Okay, so when you're happy with how that looks, go back to object mode and select the other mesh because now I want to select all the edges of this mesh. So with the mesh selected, go back into edit mode again and start selecting every single edge that you want to be beveled. Once again, I'm going to fast forward this bit because it's going to take a while. Probably the perfect time for some interval music. Okay, now they're all finally selected. We can press Control B again and bevel the edges to how you want them. However, I do want a couple more lines in this to make it a bit more smooth curve on the edge. So if you scroll up with the mouse wheel, it will give you more lines and it'll give it a smoother edge. Perfect. So back in the object mode and select the other mesh again. I now wanna duplicate this mesh to go around the rest of the crate. So shift D, you can see I can now move that around, but I wanna press the right mouse button to duplicate it in the same place. Now press the N key, and this will bring up the mesh transform options. In the panel under rotation, where it says Y, type in 90 and press enter. As you can see, that adds a panel on the bottom. Now you can shift D that panel, which will once again duplicate it. And then if you press the right mouse button, that will duplicate it in the exact place as the other one. Now this time under Y and rotation, type in 270 degrees, and that will make it so the panel goes on top. Brilliant. 
Okay, let's go back to the first panel. And you want to do exactly the same with this one, but on the Z axis. So that means the first one you duplicate is going to be 90. The second one you duplicate is going to be 180. And the third one you duplicate is going to be 270. And once that's all done, you're going to have yourself a nice solid crate. Well, not quite because I want to join it all together. So to do that, we're going to select all the panels first, making sure that we select the main body of the crate last. So as before, select the first one and then shift left mouse button until you select the rest. We go up to these little bars at the top under object and go down until you can see the little button that says join. Click that and your mesh is solid. And if we go into edit mode, you can see it's all one mesh. And then back into object mode again, move it left and right just to make sure we haven't missed any bits out. And that seems to be moving just fine. Okay, so now we want to make the cross supports. Go up to add, mesh and cube. So on the toolbar, click on scale and use your mouse to scale it to the size you want it. Once you've done that, move the cube to where you want it on the front of the panel. Once you've got it in the right place or close to, back to scale again and stretch it. You want to stretch it quite far because it's got to go from corner to corner. Then on the Y axis, rotate it to 45 degrees. Once it's rotated, you've got to make sure you click local view in the little panel right above. This means that when we stretch it, it will actually stretch it long ways. If we had it on global, it would try stretch it sideways, which would just make it wider. Okay, now shift D to duplicate again and rotate it to 135 degrees. That should make a perfect cross. Now you've just got to move it back a little bit so they're not intersecting. And try and make it look like it's sitting on top of the wood. You may have to scale it inwards a bit to do that. Okay, now select one of the pieces of wood and go into edit mode. When you're in there, select the two edges so that we can bevel them again. If you feel like you want extra lines to make it curve more, you can just scroll up with the mouse wheel a little bit. Then of course, we just repeat the same process with the other one. So object mode, select the mesh, back into edit mode, select the two lines and bevel. And when we're done with that, we go back into object mode. Select the two cross pieces, then go up to the object tab and press join. Okay, so go over to the tool panel and click rotate. And as you can see, when you rotate the mesh, it just spins around itself. But what we want is we want it to rotate around the original mesh. However, before we do that, press Ctrl A with the mesh selected and apply the rotation and scale. This sets the rotation and scale back to zero. So to make it rotate around the mesh, we need to go to object, choose set origin and choose origin to cursor. And because I haven't moved the cursor, it's in the center of the interface, which is coincidentally in the center of our cube, which means that when we rotate it now, it will rotate in exactly the same way as the panels did beforehand. So as you can see here, we're just duplicating them. On the first one, we're duplicating at 90 degrees like before. On the second one, we're duplicating at 180 degrees like before. And on the third one, we're duplicating at 270 degrees like before. And now we've repeated that process, it's time to repeat the joining process. So select all the parts, making sure you select the main crate at the end. And once that is done, we go up to object and join. And now you can see finally, we have one beautifully complete mesh. Okay, it's time to move on to UV editing. Okay, click on the UV editing tab, click on face select, Press A to select all, then click on the UV tab at the top here and choose UV Smart Project. Separate the island margins a little bit and then click OK. And as you can see, now you've done that, all the faces are on the left hand side here and they're ready to have a wooden texture applied to them. Meaning it's time to click on the shading tab. Now the first thing you can see is we already have a principal BSDF shader on there. You can change basic things like the base color, the roughness, the shininess, uh, the bump, etc. But what we want to do is we want to add a PBR texture on there. So to make that really easy, we're going to go to Edit, Preferences, and we're going to find the Node Wrangler add-on and apply it. If you just type in Node, and it should find it, and then all you have to do is tick the little square box, which I've already got ticked there, and then go down to the bottom left corner with the three little lines and click Save Preferences. 
Now that we've applied the node wrangler, you can go and click on the principal BSDF, press Control Shift T, which will bring up your folders. Then just go to where you've saved your texture, select all of them, and click on principal texture set. And as you can see, voila, all work is done for you. Obviously you can see a problem with the texture. The grain is going the wrong way and it's too big. But before we do that, we'll get rid of the displacement and the image that's with it because we don't need it. Okay, so to get the grain of the wood going in the right direction, we have to go back to UV editing. And now this time you want to come over to the left hand side of the screen. And if you use the shortcut A, that will select all. R for rotate, then type in 90 and press enter, which will rotate it 90 degrees, meaning the grain will be going in the right direction. If we quickly go back to layout, you'll be able to see basically what we've just done. So all the grain is going the right way, but it still is too big. So we need to increase the size of the texture to make it look more natural. So to do that, we go back into shading again. We come over to the mapping area and we add a value node in. Attach the value node to the scale of the mapping node. Then just type in the amount of times you want the texture to be scaled. Obviously, when you first apply the value node, it goes back to zero, so you can't see any texture on there whatsoever. I'm going to probably type in five. That means the scale of the texture has gone up by five, so there'll be more grain. And I think that looks pretty good. But before I do anything else, I want to change the render engine to cycles because it looks a lot better than Eevee. I'll head back into layout mode now, so I can just have a nice quick look at my finished mesh. And if you're happy with it, it's time to make the scene. So first we want to click Add, Mesh, and choose Plane. This is going to act as our backdrop. And this took quite a lot of messing about, so I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. So as you can see, you get the plane so it fits just underneath the box. Scale it up a little bit more. And you go into Edit Mode and select the line on the back. Extrude that upwards until you make yourself a nice tall wall. Select the corner between the wall and the floor and bevel it. Then scroll upwards to add more lines to make the mesh smoother. And right at the end, go back to Object Mode, select the Object tab, and choose Shade Smooth, which will take any rigid lines out of the bevel connecting the wall and the floor. Okay, so now it's time to add some HDR lighting. So go to Shading tab, come down to where it says Object and click World. Now we can't see the node set up and there should be one. The easiest way to find it is to press Home on your keypad, and that will bring the node set up to the center of your window. So first click Add, Texture, and choose Environment Texture. Join the Environment Texture to the color of the background. Everything will go pink, but don't worry, it's just because there's no HDRI added yet. So click on Open, find out where you saved your HDRI, and click Open Image. The first thing you want to do is take the strength down to something like 2. So to do that, go down to the Background tab, and you can either just slide it backwards a bit at a time until you get it right, or you can just click a value in. Of 0.2. After you're happy with that, go back to the layout mode, have a little look, see what the color's like, then go to your render properties, look down until you find the film tab, open that up, and then click the little box that says transparent. If you do that, you'll keep the lighting from the HDRI, but the HDRI itself will not be visible. When you're happy with all of that, uh, it's time to mess about with the lighting a little bit. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail here, but if you have a look at this, you can literally click on the light. And you can come over to this little tab on the bottom on the right here, this little light symbol. And you can change all the properties, like you can change the brightness, you can change the radius of the light, etc. I'm going to take the light down a little bit, and I'm going to add a few more lights in. Continue playing about with that until you're happy the way your object is illuminated. And then it's time for us to start adding more crates and finishing the scene off. And by now, at the time of this video, you should already know how to do this. So you literally just shift D the crate. Um, move it about a bit, rotate it, maybe put one on top of the other like I do here. And once you're happy with what it looks like, it's time to get ready to set up the camera. To set up the camera is nice and easy. All you've got to do is get to the angle you want, move back from the C a little bit, then press Control, Alt and Zero on the numpad. That will create this little box that will go around your scene. And that little box is basically the view of the camera. Okay, come over to the Render Properties. And then if you go down on the right under Render, you can see where it says Max Samples. Change that to about 200. Otherwise, it will take too long for the image to render. 
And all you have to do is go to the render tab at the top of the page and click render image. Now this bit will take a little bit of time, but luckily enough with the magic of editing, suddenly the bar jumps to 98%. Ah, perfect. Would you look at that? Nearly done. And when the progress bar finally gets to the end, you can go up to the top, click on the tab that says image, click save as, give it a name. Let's go for Crati. And then finally click the wonderful save button and your work is done. Well, I say your work is done. It's almost done. The only thing left to do now is to take your image into an image editing software, play with the brightness and contrast till everything's perfect. And that my friends is CHPZ.